Okay. So this represents the y-intercept and not the slope. Very good. Now I lost track of what I was doing. Okay, so then now I could ask a different question. So this is a continuation of that exercise. If we were to say, okay, please find the cost of traveling, traveling uh, 3,000 miles. So specifically in this story. Now this really is just another version of these first two questions that I asked. but I don't want you to think of it in this way. Rather, I want you to think of it uh, in terms of this model. Okay, so what am I asking you to do from this prompt with this model? Plug in 3,000. Plug in 3,000 for x. So we're gonna take that model and we're going to evaluate that x is 3,000. Okay, now what I'm trying to get across <coughs> to you is that, okay, here is, here is a perfectly intelligible story question. Like you, you could actually go through this in real life. You know, if you're wondering about renting a car, well, how much would it be to, ca to travel 3,000 miles? Okay, then here you have this math statement. In, in this model, I want you to evaluate at 3,000, at x is 3,000. So is there any que question why this story request turns into this math request? Because if you can get from the story request to the math request, then the rest of it is, is straightforward. Is there any question why it comes to, comes to this? Okay. So doing that, uh, I get 570. So that'd be y is 0 0.15 multiplied by 3,000 plus 120. So y is 570. And what does that number mean in the context of this exercise? Total cost. Okay, how about um, <coughs> uh, if the cost, so given that the cost was, say, <coughs> um, given the cost was 4 to 7.50 how many miles were traveled? So now in real to put this into a real story <coughs> you know you could be this could be you returning the car and they say, and they say well that'll be four hundred and twenty seven dollars and fifty cents and you say what? How could that how could that be right and then you've got a check? Okay. So then now this is the story prompt. Would someone please translate it into mathematics? Yes? So this is what we're paying what we go in now? Or this is the This is this is they just give you the keys at the beginning. At the beginning and just say, We'll just hit you up when you get back. Okay? So the total cost is 427.50. So what's being asked mathematically? Y being 427.5 equals uh, 0.15 x plus 120, and you just solve for x. Very good. So now it's we're, again, using the model that we determined in part 3. We want to evaluate at y is 4 to 7.50, and after we do that, we want to solve for x.
Okay, now, once you have translated the story into math, the rest of it's straightforward. So before I do that, is there any question about why this is the translation? Because once you see that, that this is it, then, then it's just mechanical from here. Is this okay? Okay. So then 427.50 equal 0.15x <coughs> plus 120. So that'd be 307.50 is 0.15x. So 307.50 divided by 0.15 <coughs> equal x. And then now this is something you can type into your calculator. And get 2050 is x. And so what does this mean in the context of the story? That's how many miles you travel. Yeah. <coughs> so this would be like they say, okay, that'll be four, $427.50. And then you say, what? And then you check that, and you say, oh, yeah, it really was 1,025 miles to get there and 1,025 miles to get back. Okay. All right. Any question about this? Okay. <coughs> now... different exercise. We could, we could say, suppose the population <coughs> of a town grows linearly, which is, of course, ridiculous. But this is a college algebra class, so okay, we'll go with that. Grows linearly. Uh, this year, in 2017, uh, the population is 1314, which is funny because that's the name of this course. Haha. -ha. And suppose that uh, 10 years ago, in 2007, uh, the population was seven hundred ninety four. Okay. First request make a linear model relating. population y to year x. So, okay. So in comparison to the previous exercise, I'd like to observe that notably absent is the word per, right? Or for each, or something like that. So what were we not given? Slope. Okay, so this, so it's unlike, in, in that sense, it's unlike the previous exercise. Okay. <clears throat> So let's think about it for a minute. Just what were we given? What were we given? Two coordinates, Two coordinates right? Two points is what we were actually given. <clears throat> so let's try and see if we can come up with an idea. <coughs> so if we were to plot this, x and y. 
then we were given two points. We were given a point in 2017, this year, and we were given a point 10 years ago, in 2007. So in 2007, the population was about 800, and now it's about 1,300. So that means the population is getting bigger as time gets bigger. So that is to say that the population maybe looks something like this. So there's a point, and there's another point. So what are the coordinates of this point? Two thousand seven. Seven ninety four. And what is the what are the coordinates of the other one? Twenty seventeen. Thirteen fourteen. Okay. So now the very first um the very first sentence says that the population grows linearly. Okay, so that means that at any point in time, the population has to fall on the line that's passing through those two points. That's what that means. So we could draw this line. So that's a drawing, a sketch of what it is that we're looking for. But what, I, what what's requested is a linear model, which is to say an equation. Okay. So what are the two names of the equations of lines, the two named equations of lines, lines that we have? Point slope, Point slope and slope intercept. Right. So in particular, slope-intercept means slope-y-intercept. So were we given a y-intercept? No? But a y-intercept is a point, right? And we were given two points. So how come, how come these points aren't y-intercepts? Right, to be a y-intercept means to be that point right there. We weren't given that point, we were given these other two. So for that reason, that's your signal that we're going to use. That, so, so observe <coughs> that we were not given a slope directly or a y-intercept. And therefore, let's use the point slope. And not slope intercept. Okay, so if we're going to do that, then notably, we need a slope, right? Because we were given two points and we weren't given a slope. So how can we figure out the slope from the data that we have? Exactly. So slope is rise over run. So the run, delta x, well, that would be 2017 minus 2007, which is 10. <coughs> and then delta y would be 1314 minus 794, which is what? 520. And then what is slope? with respect to these two numbers. Delta y over delta x. So on this specific exercise, the slope is 52. So what does that mean? 
in the context of the story. Right. So this means that it's 52 human per one year. So one per week, right? Just like clockwork. <laughs> OK, <clears throat> good. So now let's come up with an equation. So, in particular, we'll use the point-slope one, which is y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. So this would be y minus... So now, t the point-slope, I know that I'm going to use that slope, 52. Which point am I going to use? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whichever one you want. So I'll use... Uh, I'll use the one with slightly smaller numbers. So y minus 794 is 52 times x minus 2007. So now I'll multiply and collect. So y minus 794 is 52x, and then minus some big number, 104364, and then I'll add 794 to both sides. So y is 52x minus 103,570. Now, you might look at those numbers and say, I don't know, 103,570? That sounds like a... <coughs> That sounds like a strange number. Maybe this isn't right. So how could you confirm or deny that you have the right answer? Correct. So we know, we allege that this equation gives us this line. So if we substitute this xy value in, the equation ought to be true. And if we substitute that xy value in, the equation ought to be true. Which is to say, let's take 52x minus big number and plug in 2007. What should we get? So 52, 52 times 2007 minus 103570. So there it is. I should get 794, right? Okay, that looks good. And then how to, so that, that's good, but that doesn't tell us for sure. How do we know for sure that we have the right answer? Test, Test the other one. So if we plug in 2017, we should get 1314. Okay, it's got to be right then. Any question about this? Okay. <clears throat> so now, 2... I could say, <clears throat> uh, what was the population at uh, 2010? So, which is to say in the year 2010, what was the population? So let's translate this into math. So what is this translated into math? Mm -hmm. So in model, in the model that we established in one, we want to evaluate at x is 2010. Is there any question why? the story request translates into that math request. Okay. So y is 52 multiplied by 2010 minus 
103570. So now I'm going to make an error. I want you to tell me about it. So uh, let's say that I write down 1950. And so in the first place, this is probably not the answer that you got, right? So what's the answer that you got? 950. So, so this is a, an arithmetic error somehow. But I claim that this is actually much more than an arithmetic error. It's far worse. Something categorically wrong has occurred. What categorically wrong has occurred? <laughs> can you can you say it again loudly? <laughs> right. So we're saying that here we have these these two data points of the population. In the big year, the big population was around 1,300. And in the little year, the little population was around 800. So if I ask for an intermediate year, then the population ought to be intermediate, right? So there's no way, <laughs> there's no way that, <laughs> that, the, that the increase could be linear and you don't have an intermediate population. Okay, so does everybody see that, yes, this is an arithmetic error, but even more than that, it's a categorical error because this is a word problem. What that means that in a matter, as a matter of practice for you, it means that if this was an abstract exercise, I'd count off a little for this. But, if, but because this is a word problem, I would count off a lot okay, because it, it's categorically wrong. So don't do that. So is 950 intermediate between 794 and 1314? Yeah. yeah, so at least it passes that reasonableness test. So three, uh, when is the population, um, when is the population uh, 2000? So now what am I asking? Yeah, so now I'm asking, again with model one, I want you to evaluate at y is 2,000, and then after you've done that, do what? Evaluate it, why it's 2000 and then. Well, so I'll, I'll leave that there for a moment. So if, if I write 2000 equal 52x minus 103570, so I plugged in y is 2000, now what do you want me to do? Solve for x. Okay, thank you. That's what I. Oh, did you say it? I probably yeah. just. Sorry, I just can't hear. Okay. So let's let's do that. Uh, okay. So then, that'd be one zero five five seventy <coughs> is five two x, and then one zero five. 570 over 5.2 is x. Now, before I type this into the machine, <clears throat> you should be able to tell me, a, you should have a notion about, about this. What's the smallest it could possibly be? 2017.01? Yeah. It, it, it couldn't possibly be any smaller than 2017, right? So if, if you gave me a number less than 2017, 
then you, you, just, you just couldn't possibly be correct, right? So then let's, let's type this in. So 105570 divided by 52. So this is telling me that 20, 30, 0.2-ish is x. So on a real exercise, I would tell you exactly how I want you to round. So does that pass the reasonableness test? Yeah. Now, notably, the, you might think me asking you about this question and saying, well, no one would. That would be ridiculous. No one would give you an answer less than 2017. Well, how many years elapsed between 2017 and 2030? 13, right? It takes 13 years, which is to say it will take 13 years to go from population around 1300 to population around 2000, 2000. Many students will give the answer x is equal to 13. Of course what they mean is that it will take 13 years to get here, but that's not what I asked. I asked what year in what year does it happen? Okay? It happens in 2030. You'd be you may, you might be surprised at the things the things I see. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> good. Any question about this? Okay, so that's that's really it as far as linear models. It's just there's two possibilities, and they correspond exactly and only to the point-slope formula or the slope-intercept formula. So now let's talk about something completely different. So section two point four complex numbers. So now we can finally do this joke that I've been wanting to do all semester. So in English, the word complex has at least two meanings. One of the meanings is um, complicated, meaning like, wow, this is really difficult. Okay, but that's not the only meaning of the word complex because, for example, a shopping complex is not a region in which it is particularly <coughs> difficult to shop, right? <laughs> that's not what that means. So in the other usage of complex means consisting of multiple parts. And that's what, we're, what is meant here. So to motivate the topic and joke, Let's consider this equation, x squared is 1. I think that I'll get probably no objection when I say that the solution to this, which is to say what x's can we plug in so that the resulting equation evaluates to logical true? What are the solutions? 1 is one of them, right? <coughs> but what's the other? Negative one. Negative 1. There are no others among the reals. Okay, then I could say, well, how about this one? x squared is negative 1. So how about this? I'm assuming it's a complex number. Well, I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> okay, so then, could, could a positive number satisfy this? No. No, because if you square a positive, the result is positive. And it couldn't possibly be negative 1. Could a negative number be a solution to this? No, because if you square a negative, the result is positive. So it couldn't possibly be, ne be negative 1. Could 0 be the solution? No. No, because if you square 0, you get 0, and that's not negative 1. So the answer to this is that there is no real solution. But there came a point in time in history some time ago, back in the day, when... So in present times, there's people called physicists, people who work in, on physics, you know, like particle accelerators and things like that. There's people who work in mathematics and people who work in philosophy. And all of these people were the same people at this point in history, and they were all called natural philosophers. So like, for example, Isaac Newton was not called a mathematician or a physicist or a philosopher. He was called a natural philosopher. So there came a time 
when the natural philosophers, the subset of those natural philosophers who would be mathematicians, said, you know what? I want there to be a solution to this. I, and I just want to know what that would be like. So the people who would be mathematicians said, okay, let I solve x squared equal to negative 1. So the first consequence of this is that I is not real. So it's not a real number. It's still a number, but it's not real. 2, I squared is negative 1. So we're talking about something that when you square it, you get negative 1. It must also be the case, to be consistent with the other rules that we like about numbers, it must also be the case that if you square negative i, that has to be the same as squaring i, and that'll still be negative 1, which means that this equation has two solutions, i and negative i, just like this equation has two solutions, 1 and negative 1. <coughs> okay. And so now, here is the joke, one of the oldest jokes in mathematics. So the people who would be mathematicians we're going through this thought experiment. And the people who would be physicists, you know, p people who want to connect everything to a real, a real world phenomenon said, that, my friend, is ridiculous, what you're talking about there. And, these, <laughs> and for that reason, the, the would-be physicists referred to these as imaginary numbers. Okay? Which is why this is called I, for imaginary. And then, in a backhanded sort of touche, the people who would be mathematicians renamed the set of numbers, which were just called numbers at that, at that time, to the real numbers, <laughs> in contrast to the imaginary ones. Okay, then you have all kinds of jokes like, what are imaginary numbers used for? Oh, they're for counting my unicorns, and things like this. Okay, but the mathematicians got the last laugh because modern physics, quantum mechanics, the thing that runs all of these cameras and all the devices and, and underpins our entire understanding uses a certain number set to perform its calculations. And what number set is that? The imaginary ones. <laughs> so, so the mathematicians got the last laugh there, huh? Way to go, physicists. Okay, we'll finish this next time. <laughs>